Hey guys, Peter here to tell you about the latest from the Spiced Icon, Dead to Hey, out October 28th on Nuclear Blast. The CP has 5 tracks, 18 minutes in length, and this is the band's second. They are an iconic Canadian deathcore band. This EP celebrates the 20 year anniversary of the band, and they dug deep in order to find these incredible old cuts released as part of two splits, one in 2004 and one in 2006, taking two from the 2004 and three from the 2006 and bringing them to life to a whole new audience, to a whole new group of fans that perhaps had never heard them before. They're also gonna be available on vinyl for the first time, making this anniversary edition even more special. Now let's go through these five songs, starting off with the opening track, Warm Blooded, a song that has incredible drums and guitars working together to really pound the listener to submission. A track that doesn't move fast, it moves in a more methodic way, but it picks up a lot of heaviness, a lot of weight from moving in that sort of slower motion. Now the vocals add aggression, they add uh, life, they infuse energy to the track, and the bass popping every so often throughout the song creates a nice nuance, it adds to the overall volume, it adds to the overall presence, it adds to the overall thickness of the song, a track that uses those elements at its trademark in order for you to feel how relentless it is without necessarily coming at you fast and furious. But Bulletproof Scales does, that's the next song. These two were part of that 2004 split release. So Bulletproof Scales is definitely a song that has a lot of the elements of the previous track. They just come at you with more direction, with more power, with even more aggression. Because once you increase the tempo, once you move the song faster, once you make the song move faster, you feel like the song gains aggression, it gains power, it gains heaviness. Even though it's not necessarily the case, it's just how you perceive it as the listener. Now I like the fact that it comes at you, that it feels relentless from that point of view because you're able to adjust a lot quicker to the heaviness and aggression that the track offers both musically and vocally. It's a very engaging track. The vocals on this song are absolutely gnarly from start to finish. The vocal range creates a lot of ebbs and flows on a track that has more of a one directional way and that's important so that the track becomes dynamic and becomes engaging. The two blend well with one another so are you able to move the track up and down by using the vocal range and not necessarily changing the overall architecture of the sound of the song. Next you have One Last Martini. This is part one of those three songs that were released originally released in 2006. And the first thing that you notice between the first two and, and the last three is the guitar sound and how much it changes. The guitar sound feels a little bit more technical, a little bit more experimental, if you will, and that adds a different flavor to how the songs are put together. It doesn't take anything away from the aggression. Uh, One Last Martini is still a very aggressive song. It doesn't take anything away from the heaviness of the track. One Last Martini has really strong and vicious drums but it does change how you move along or how you perceive the different momentums within the song. It has a dynamic motion of sound and vocals and the guitars really become or start to become with this song a little bit more of your focus or the focus of your attention as you're progressing, as you're digesting these tracks. Oval Shaped Incisions takes everything that one last martini did and then turns it to 11. It's a song that still has that experimental guitar sound to it, but it takes it to a different level. It allows the song to have a little bit more of ebbs and flows, not just sound-wise, but vocally. So it becomes a more chaotic, a more dynamic song, a song that has more movement, but it still has great drive, great heaviness, constantly growing. That's maybe the best way to describe the song. It doesn't stay still, it doesn't follow patterns. It's always adding something, it's always growing, it's always morphing, it's always becoming bigger. Adding some groove elements to the guitar uh, allow the song at times to feel like it has some pauses, it feels like it has some breaks, it makes the listener uh, more comfortable in the overall experience of the track. You don't feel like there's too much coming at you at once. So adding that grooviness is a really important touch that just makes the song feel slightly smoother and makes your overall experience a lot better. Last but not least, Sever the Ties. The drums and the guitars rip through 
this song from start to finish. They just work really well with one another. Even though you can see them in different lanes or in separate lanes, you can still see what they do together as one as they create this wall of sound that just keeps getting closer and closer to the listener. The vocals help add volume to the overall experience, to the overall dynamic of the track. And this is another song that uses the bass in a very creative way to create nuances, to create ripple effects in the sound, in the overall experience that the track offers. A track that really lives off of the volume and thick sound that it carries, and that becomes the trademark of the song from start to finish, and it's an absolute banger of a song. No better way to finish this EP than a song that leaves you almost with an exclamation mark, allowing you to go back to the beginning and experience this roller coaster ride all over again. This is it, Despised Icon celebrating 20 year anniversary with Detehe out October 28th on Nuclear Blast. And keep in mind, there's new material coming out in 2023 from this iconic Canadian band. Uh, let me know your thoughts on the band, on the songs, on the EP in the comment section. I'll see you all in the next video.